being on and the others being off. And that entire set is typically recorded by a camera, uh, and that's what a reflectance screen. So let's do that. So this is what uh, it looks like. It basically, you have individual light cycling over the entire sphere, and the subject or the object in this case being a mirror ball re responding to light from that direction. So this is basically all the possible light that an object can react to. Once you record a subject's response to that, it's uh, relatively straightforward to replicate their response to any arbitrary lighting condition with this kind of data. So this would be 168 different photographs that you have to take uh, with this uh, light stage. All right. So the other application that a light stage like this can be used for is uh, many times actors need to be composited in a virtual scene, which could be a volcano or something like that. It's too, too dramatic, so you need to capture them in a studio and then composite them. And when you're doing that, the lighting in the studio needs to match the lighting of the virtual scene. So a device like the light stage can actually illuminate an actor directly with the desired lighting. So what we have here is uh, a lighting environment called the Grace Cathedral, which is relatively popular in, in the field of computer graphics. It looks like that. We sample the lighting and discreetly and reproject that with the lights of the light stage. So if you look at this environment, we're trying to reproduce it on the mirror ball uh, right there you know, as discreetly as possible uh, and, and, and rotating. So currently the, the environment is rotating around. So this is the type of uh, lighting that a film actors would be recorded in. So this technique was used a lot for Spider-Man and Superman movies uh, in the early 2000s because this was the most photorealistic way of doing uh, VFX at the time. Uh, things have moved on from there, but uh, that's one thing that was very popular back then. So the other thing that uh, you'll notice is that this is a red, green, blue environment map, and we are using white lamps and the red, green, blue lamps. And so you might have a question, why is that? Well, it turns out that RGB lamps can produce white light on their own, but when they do that, the light in reproduction is not really good. So white light gets produced a bit more bluish, purplish with an RGB lamp. Instead, when we combine it with our white lamps, we produce a much better white for the desaturated colors while using only the RGB lamps for the saturated colors. So that this is a good combination, it turns out. All right, so at this point, um, if, does anyone want to go inside uh, and see what it feels like to be recorded? <laughs> All right. <laughs> So basically right now you have the light of the orange altar coming from the right and the light from the windows in the environment, did you, did you close it? Uh, coming from above essentially. Uh, and now it's more realistic to photograph you like this and composite in that background essentially. Okay, so this is one application. The other things that uh, we can do with the spectral co uh, control is of course uh, try and study how does uh, different materials like, uh, like human skin react to different spectra of illumination. So if you now illuminate our subject with pure red light, you will see that their skin is very, uh, has a soft and clear appearance. And this is because red light penetrates and scatters a lot inside the human skin. But then we slowly switch to another bank. By the way, you still have the other lights on for some reason. Okay. Uh, so on the green light, uh, you'll see a lot more surface detail and freckles in, in the skin. And this is because th that's where the absorptive layers of, of the melanin come into play. Uh, and now when you switch to blue light, you might see a little bit even more, more of that. Uh, so basically there's different scattering properties of, uh, and, uh, and absorption properties of light to different wavelengths and R, G, and B are essentially are different wavelengths of light. But you also have uh, different color temperature controllable whites, so when we cycle through them, you'll see incandescent again produces that soft appearance because it's more on the, towards the red spectrum. Neutral is more towards the middle and then the cool spectrum is more towards the blue. So the skin appearance straight changes rather dramatically under these different spectra. And these are real illuminants that we have uh, typ uh, typically in our everyday use, fluorescent to incandescent. So we can do recordings under such illumination uh, more accurately. And the last thing that we want to use the light stage, of course, is to actually capture uh, faces. And for that, we you know, want to do uh, their sh a recording of their shape besides their texture. So for shape measurement, uh, there's a new form of photometric stereo called spherical gradient illumination where the light stage does bright to dark in principle x, y, and z directions. 
to cycle through those. So right now we're doing an X gradient, a Y gradient, a Z gradient from front, and then a reverse X, a reverse Y, which is bright from below or dark above, and a reverse Z, which is bright behind the dark at the front. Can you cycle through them again? So X, Y, Z, reverse X, reverse Y, reverse Z. And this, these are the kind of conditions that help us record, uh, get an estimate of the shape of the, the object or the shape of the face besides uh, their texture. So that's all we really we have to show today in the demo. Any questions? Cool. We'll get the outlines and get our subject. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.